Okay, so today I want to talk about timing. This is the time of year where the baseball season is just about to begin. We're in Massachusetts, so we're just finally going to hopefully start to get outside soon to start playing some games. I know other players from around the country and other parts of the world are already outside playing. But typically early in the season, you'll hear this a lot, where players are talking about timing, right? And you'll hear it from coaches, you'll hear it from parents. It's hard to get through a game without hearing somebody say something about timing, especially early in the season, right? Hey, you just got to get your timing down, you know? We just got to get our timing down. We got to work on our timing, which I do believe is true to a point. Hitters aren't used to seeing live pitches. And so, yes, it will take a little bit of time to get your timing down. After seeing pitches, right, and we've talked about the importance of, of tracking pitches during bullpen work and being able to see the ball out of the pitcher's hand. And we've talked about uh, when you're not hitting and you're in the on-deck circle, working on your timing and when you're getting ready to hit. And I think all of that gets better the more you do it, especially early in the season. But I do think that timing and players talking about how they need to get their timing down or improve their timing is used oftentimes incorrectly. And what I mean by that is there are players that will hit at the beginning of a season and, and they'll struggle and they'll say, well, my timing's off. I've just got to get my timing down. And then a few weeks later, after they've now played in multiple games, they'll say, well, my timing, you know, my timing's off. I got to get my timing down. And you can go to these players after a month or two months or three months or six months and they'll say, well, I'm just trying to get my timing down. And there comes a point when I say, it doesn't matter how many more pitches, how many more pitches do you need to see, right? They think that they just need to see more and more pitches to get their timing down. For me, this is a red flag. And it isn't about just seeing more pitches, but it's about your actual swing mechanics. And swing mechanics are a huge part of timing that a lot of people don't think about. And so what I wanna talk about today are some things that, if you're someone that's always saying your timing is off, Right? If it's the first thing you say, if I say, hey, what's, you know, how are you feeling up there? You know, how's your swing feeling? You say, well, my timing's off. I got to get my timing down. It could be a red flag that there's mechanical issues with your swing that need to be adjusted and need to be fixed or else your timing is never going to get better. Right? And so let's talk about some of those things. The first one I'll start with, and this is what, again, most people go to, and I do think this is part of it, is just understanding if you're late or early with your timing, right? So if you are typically late, well, then we talk about needing to get started earlier, right? And this is a very simple fix. We're going to get more in-depth in a second. But if, if I notice that I'm consistently late, well, then I have to get my body prepped and, and moving earlier. I need to get loaded earlier. And so if I'm late, and I notice via video or in my on-deck preparation that I start to get ready, right? So I start to get loaded a little bit too late. Let's say it's when the arm is basically making this upward swing right here. Well, then I've got to get ready earlier in the process, right? So maybe I decide I'm going to change that. I'm going to get it ready when this pitcher breaks his hands, okay? So that's an easy way to, to help your timing. But again, most people think that that's timing. They think, let me see a bunch of balls thrown at me. That'll help my timing. And then if I'm off time, either early or late, well now, let me just adjust. Maybe I've got to get ready earlier. Or if I'm really early, let me get ready a little bit later. And a lot of times that can be like putting, you know, a Band-Aid on, on a bullet wound, okay? And you're going to need more than just a Band-Aid. And so let's talk about mechanically what timing issues, if you're someone that says that a lot, what could be going on mechanically? The first thing is how you're loading your body. Are you getting loaded properly? Are you able to then control that load? So this is really, really important. What happens a lot with players is that during the loading process, so before they actually swing the bat, when they're getting loaded and ready to hit, they're either not getting loaded properly or they're not controlling their load properly. And that is gonna make it very difficult for a variety of reasons to be on time. So let's go through a couple of examples. Let's say one, 
you're somebody that is always early. One big issue could be, and you need to look at this through video, are you getting loaded? And we've made a lot of videos on this. We talk about two, really two things. The, the first thing is the lower body, and it's getting my lower body and getting this rear leg loaded. And so we talk about getting that leg loaded by getting our hips to slightly coil, right? So we're gonna get our hips to slightly coil. You can think about taking your back pocket towards the pitcher, right? So that back pocket towards the pitcher is gonna get my hips to coil. It's gonna get this rear leg to load back in the opposite direction that it is then going to turn, right? With the upper body, we talk about same thing. We get this little bit of a coil here and we also get a pullback, which is basically getting my rear arm to get back behind my hands. So this is our load right here, okay? I need to be able to get loaded, but then when I lift my foot up to stride, I need to be able to stay loaded. I have to be able to keep this rear leg loaded. And what a lot of players do is they either don't get loaded properly, and the second they go to, to get ready to hit, they just start to push forward. Right, so instead of getting myself loaded and coiled, they immediately wanna jump. Some players, instead of getting coiled around this back leg right here, they may just get their weight back, right? So they get their weight back, they don't coil, they just get their weight back. Now I have all my weight on my back leg. When I pick up my front leg, it makes me wanna push, right? So I. I get back here and I push. It's one thing we talk a lot about when it comes to loading. Most players are just told to get loaded and usually it's, hey, get your weight back. Get your weight back. It's not just about getting your weight back. It's not about getting your weight back, right? If I shift back, I'm probably going to shift forward. And so those players get really jumpy. And when I get jumpy and I start to shift my weight forward early, it's very difficult for me to then be able to, if it's not the exact speed of pitch that I think is coming, it's hard for me to not swing and be early. I'm going to be early more consistently, right? So not loading properly. Instead of coiling, I get my weight back, I shift forward. Now there's also some players that do get loaded properly, right? So they do get loaded properly like this, but then when they pick up this front foot, they don't do a good job of continuing to load and coil as they move forward. And so I wanna feel like I get loaded, but when I pick my foot up, I continue to feel that loaded back leg, that coiled lower body, that pulled back upper body. And that is gonna help fight to keep me back as I'm moving forward. So you can see how that allows me to still be back versus if I get here, but now I pick up and I start to unload everything. So I don't pull back anymore. I don't stay coiled and I just go forward and I release that pullback and my leg starts to turn early and push, I'm gonna be early again, right? So there's a couple of examples of our loading technique, how we get the body prepped to move. You either don't get loaded properly or you do get loaded properly, but you don't stay loaded as you move forward, okay? So look at both of those things. If you are someone, again, that is struggling with timing. Another thing that players that are always saying that they don't have good timing or need to work on their timing struggle with is bat path. And so my barrel has to work behind the ball. So by behind the ball, I just mean my barrel's gotta turn and start to get on plane. I need to start working slightly up through the ball. When I do that, I now give myself the ability to stay through the zone longer. So my barrel is going to travel through the zone this way longer. The longer, I call it a hitting window, the longer I can stay in the hitting zone, the longer I can keep my barrel working through the hitting zone, the better my chances are of making contact with that pitch. And so if you think about these balls being thrown right here, I don't know where along this pitch path, right? So here's the pitch path. I don't know at what point I'm going to make contact, right? I might make it here, 
I might make it here. If I had a third hand, I'd hold another ball out here, right? So I'm gonna make it somewhere along this pitch path. I'm not good enough to be exactly precise every single time with it. But if I give myself the ability to get my barrel into that hitting zone, so again, when I say behind the baseball, if I'm able to get my barrel turned so that I can get my barrel behind this ball early, right, and not be down through it too much or up through it too much, but get behind it and on path with it, well, now I give myself a greater shot. I can now hit that pitch at multiple pitch points and not just at this one single spot right here. And so, again, I've got to get my barrel turned behind the ball so I can be on path longer. I also have to be from the inside. So when we turn our barrel, I need to be from the inside and then I can release the barrel out if I need to. So there needs to be a tightness between our rear shoulder and our barrel. Our barrel should not be out here early. When I make my turn, my barrel should be tight. I continue to turn, I continue to turn. You can see there's very little space here between my barrel and my shoulder. And now if the ball's away, I let my barrel out away. If the ball's middle, I let my barrel out middle. If the ball's in, I'm in, 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 and then I let my barrel continue to stay in. So that gives me good swing direction through the hitting zone. And what players that struggle with timing again is their barrel doesn't stay through the hitting zone. A lot of those players work across the hitting zone. They work out to in instead of from in and then if I've got to let it out, I can let it out. And you can see how that allows me to stay through the zone longer, right? So now all of a sudden I have a much bigger area to impact that ball and I give myself a greater chance. Whereas if I'm cutting across this way, my barrel is in and out of the zone really, really fast. And that's a huge problem. And if my barrel isn't in the zone and it's cutting across, again, now I'm only giving myself a chance to really hit that ball in a really small window, like basically right here. And I need to expand that window. I need to make that as big as possible. All right, again, so if my barrel is cutting this way and the ball is going this way, well then my timing has to be almost perfect to intersect that ball. But if I, again, if I can get my barrel to work behind it and from inside it, now look at, I can hit that ball here, 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 here. I can hit it in all those points. So my timing automatically gets better. So check those two things out. Are you getting loaded properly? Are you staying loaded properly? And what does your swing path look like? Because those two things have a huge impact on timing. All right, so uh, if you wanna learn more about that, we've got our hitting course, which talks, it really breaks down. We, go over the four key, uh, core principles of the swing. We talk about the three absolutes of hitting. We break all of the things that we just talked about there down in much more detail. We give you drills to work on all of that. So if you wanna check that out, click the link in the description box below. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick, and college coach. With this course, we're gonna show you exactly, step by step, how to generate power, develop bat speed, and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level.